On this webcast, we're going to tell you how to never, never, ever lose another customer again. Let's go. Hey everybody, this is Antoine Dupont with Catapult Marketing and this is webcast number 39 and we have Joey Coleman in the house today. Hi Joey, how are you? Hello Antoine, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, no, no, thank you for being here. So um, Joey, you're world famous in the public speaking world. Yes, you are. I, yeah. I, that's, that's kind of you to no, say. No, 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 no. I was in Nigeria in a small village and they said, where is Joey Coleman? I swear it was a story. Where, but, were you there in Nigeria picking up the million dollars that your uncle left you? Is that how, what you How did doing? you know? Exactly. I, I received yeah, the letter good. and I was that's like. Cool. I love it. You got the letter and you just went there. I love it. That's a smart yeah. way to run it. Totally legit, right? So um, you are, you know, the customer retention uh, guru. You know, if you anything about keeping your customers, it's it's not necessarily acquiring your customers. Those is an important thing, but once you have them, is keep them, keep them happy and everything. So, in my opinion, you are the go-to person for that, and that's how I know you. But for the few oh, people that don't know you out there, uh, please introduce yourself and uh, just say a couple of things about you, and especially why you get up in the morning. Sure. So uh, I am, you're right. I spend all day, every day helping companies keep their customers. I'm a keynote speaker. I lead workshops. I do consulting all around uh, helping companies to get better at creating remarkable customer experiences. My background is eclectic as can be. I was a criminal defense lawyer. I worked for the Secret Service and the CIA and the White House during the Clinton administration. I taught at the postgraduate level. I sold promotional products. I run a branding agency. But for the last few years, I've been a full-time speaker. So I spend mm. about two and a half weeks out of every month on the road, uh, traveling around the world, giving speeches. Very cool. And I saw you uh, last year at Social Media Marketing World, yes. and you're an amazing public speaker as well. And I saw you in a smaller workshop, and I got to say, honestly, you blew my socks off. Uh, oh, I was thanks, like, man. no, Thank no, no, no. I, I, you're, you're an amazing, you're a consummate professional. Um, so today we want to talk about, uh, to all of you guys out there, business owners, people uh, running your business, and you know how to never lose a customer again, which I think is uh, a book that you have uh, coming out real soon. So yes, indeed. Uh, we'll there you go. It's actually just out. It just came out on April 3rd. So just out fresh this week. And it's going to be on my shelf as soon as I receive it. Which it's is in route. Be any day. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm going to go to the mailbox right after this. I just can't wait to put my hands into it. Um, so, you know, the, the context for all of us is, is um, you know, really making sure you keep your customers and your customer retention improves um, because it's very difficult to get a customer just to see them go because, well, you screwed up at one point or another, which is what we're going to talk about today. So we, 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 I ask you to break it down and give us like three things that we can, you know, take on this week we can implement like now to help us out sure. the first one was you wanted to uh, have us understand how much is it costing you so talk to me more about that yeah so in my opinion and all the research and data proves this actually the loss of customers so customer defection the lack of customer retention mm -hmm. in your business is causing your business to hemorrhage and you may not even realize it. So I've done the research, I've looked at every industry imaginable, businesses operating around the world. And what I found is that somewhere between 20 and 70% of your new customers mm -hmm. will decide to quit doing business with you before they reach the 100 day anniversary. Mm. That's a so huge before number. you've had an opportunity to recoup the cost of acquisition, before you've had the opportunity to recoup the marketing and sales costs, mm -hmm. before you've had the opportunity to really even get to know them, they're running out the back door as quickly as you're trying to bring them in the front door. Mm -hmm. And what's scarier for folks than thinking about this generally is looking at it specifically in their business. The average business that I start working with doesn't even know what their number is. 
And then they start to do the research and they find out that it's somewhere between 20 and 70%. And that's staggering because not only does it cost your bottom line, mm -hmm. but it costs you employee morale as well. When you're yeah. losing customers that quickly, mm -hmm. your salespeople don't usually feel it because they're still getting their commissions for bringing the sale in. Mm -hmm. But your customer account managers or your success team or the people who are in, on the operation side of your business mm -hmm. responsible for managing it, they're the ones who feel this constant churn. And right. it has a huge impact on the bottom line as well. You know, businesses are losing, you know, tons of money and, and then you have to make money on the other customers to cover the acquisition costs that you don't get back right. and the setup costs, not to mention losing employees. So the typical business, when they lose an employee, it will take somewhere between 50 and $100,000 plus yeah. to get a new employee in the door, get them trained, get them hired, get everything up and running. Mm -hmm. And when you start losing employees because you're losing customers, which happens in most businesses, they have a tendency to feed off each other. This becomes a huge, huge hit to the bottom line. Yeah. Conversely, there's a real benefit to keeping your customers. And that can be found in research from Harvard Business School, Stanford Business School, and Bain and & Company. Mm -hmm. And what they all did is they looked at the research and they found that if I can help you keep just 5% of your customers, 5% of the customers who would otherwise leave in the first 100 days, if mm -hmm. we can keep them, it will increase your profits 25 to 100%. Right? Your profits, not right. your revenue your profits. Yeah. So it really does affect the bottom line. Lots of times people, when we get into these conversations, because I talk a lot about the customer journey and knowing what your customer's going through, they say, oh, Joey, that's all touchy-feely stuff. No, there's a bottom line impact here as well. Right. Now, I agree with you. And I, you know, and for me as a service, uh, a service business, digital marketing agency, I mean, we, we just know that, you know, clients are really not profitable after the, on, until after the first year. Um, because we spend so much work, first of all, on the acquisition of the customer, enormous amount of work, and then in the preparation and the setup, that if we don't do a good job keeping them, I mean, it's, it's, it's costing us our shirt. And you're absolutely right of not knowing the numbers. Um, you know, I, I do ask, um, you know, some of my clients, you know, what is your cost of acquisition? And I, and I get the deer in the headlight look. But I actually, I currently have the deer in the headlight look. I don't know how many, what's our churn? Um, and it's fairly low for us, but I know that once in a while it just happens and it just burns. It really feels awful. And it's like, what did we do? Um, you know, where did we drop the ball? What happened? Like, you know, it, it just happens, but I think it's going to lead to the next point that we're going to, uh, to make before we go and do that. I'd like to ask everybody, uh, on the call to share with us in the comment, you know, in the box right below, um, you know, if, if, uh, if you're clear on, uh, you know, your acquisition cost and how much is it costing you to, uh, you know, lose clients, uh, in the first hundred days. So put it in the comments right below. Yeah. So what you want to do is what, how much does it cost to acquire a customer and what percentage of your customers are leaving in the first hundred days? Right. And if you don't know, just say, I don't know. Just say you don't know, and that's okay. I, and guess what? You'll be average. Yeah, I raise my hand. Yeah, raise like my hand. I don't. The majority of people that I meet, right? And no, until right. they have the chance to have these conversations and they start paying attention to these things. So no worries at all if you're not sure. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. So the second thing is the customer journey. And you have the eight phases of a customer journey. Now, I didn't know there was eight phases. I thought the first phase is, hi, I have money and I want to buy your stuff. Two, they give you money. Three, they're a client. But apparently right. there's eight phases. So talk to me about those eight phases that are of the customer journey. Yes. So there are eight phases that your customer has the potential to go through. They mm -hmm. won't go through all eight unless you hold their hand and help them go through all eight. Mm -hmm. Each of the phases starts with the letter A, uh, which ideally, if you're doing them all properly, you're getting straight A's from your customers. They're giving you good scores on your behavior. So the first phase, phase one is assess. Mm -hmm. This is where a customer considers whether or not they want to do business with you. In mm -hmm. common parlance, we think of this as marketing and sales, okay? Yeah. This can be a decision that happens instantaneously. It could be that you're in conversation with them for weeks or months or maybe even years trying to get mm -hmm. them to buy your product or service. The yeah. length of time doesn't matter. It's just this is the period where they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Then they transition from being a prospect to a customer in phase two, admit. Mm -hmm. In the admit phase, they admit that they have a problem 
or a need that they mm -hmm. believe you can solve, whether that's with your product or your service, mm -hmm. right? And this is day one of the first 100 days. This is when the clock starts ticking, right? At this point, they're gonna give you uh, some money, they're gonna sign a contract, they're gonna do something to officially let you know that they have moved from the prospecting stage to the customer stage. Right. Almost immediately after this happens, we move into phase three the affirm stage. Mm -hmm. Common parlance, this is the buyer's remorse stage. All of the science and research shows us that immediately after making a purchase decision, our brain makes us doubt the decision we just made, okay? Yeah. So they feel this buyer's remorse. And what's fascinating to me is everybody watching this webcast is going to be familiar most likely with the concept of buyer's remorse. Yeah. And yet when I ask them, how many of you in your businesses have a process to address buyer's remorse, we might as well cue the tumbleweed because less than 1% okay. of businesses do anything to address buyer's remorse, even yeah. though it's something we're all aware exists. Some mm -hmm. may say, well, Joey, that only counts for big purchases. Actually, no. The research shows it's worse for big purchases purchases, but it happens at every purchase level. So regardless of how much your product or service costs, your customer's feeling some levels of buyer's remorse. Right, which is, did, did I do the right thing? Exactly. What, what, what if this doesn't work out? What if, was mm -hmm. it because the salesperson was flirting with me that I decided to buy the product? Mm -hmm. Is it because my friend said it would be good, but my friend has made bad choices in their life in other areas too? Mm -hmm. uh, what if the guarantees and the promises they made in the sales process don't actually get delivered on? What do I do? Should I, pick, am I, gonna get should I have, yeah, should I have picked the other, uh, the other company? Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or more likely the number one competitor you have mm -hmm. is Stasis. It's doing nothing. Mm. That's the top competitor of every business on the planet. Your customer mm. isn't as often choosing between you and your competition as you think. Mm -hmm. They're usually choosing between doing something with mm -hmm. you right. and maybe others or the status quo, which is doing what they were doing before that. So that's usually who your top competition is. And then yeah. we come to phase four. Phase yeah. four is the activate stage, right? Mm -hmm. In activate, you need to energize the relationship so that you get the customer feeling excited about what is to, the, is to come. You want them to feel like doing business with you is unlike any other business relationship they've ever had before. This right. is where we get everything off on a good start. We lay the foundation for the remarkable experiences that are to come. Mm. We then come to phase five, mm -hmm. acclimate. Now, to be candid, this is where most businesses fall off the rails. Mm. This is where you want to hold the customer's hand and acclimate them to your way of doing business. Now, what's interesting is you've sold your product or service hundreds of times, thousands of times, maybe even hundreds of thousands or millions of times. Mm -hmm. But for a brand new customer, they've never done business with you. They have no idea what it's like. And what happens is most business owners say, well, didn't they read the proposal? Well, folks, you don't read the proposals you sign either. You look to see how much it's going to cost. You right. see what the deliverables are, but you rarely pay attention to the schedule, the timing, the sequence, the process. Those are mundane details that get left behind. And for anybody who says, no, Joey, that's not me, I'd ask you to think about the last time you rented a car. You went to the airport and you went to the rental agency and you probably clicked through a series of screens that said, I agree, I agree, I agree, without reading any of them or initialing without reading what you were initialing mm -hmm. because you wanted to get to the end result. You wanted your car, right? So this is how we behave as individuals. Why do we expect our customers to behave any differently? Now, this acclimate stage can last a long time or a short time. It really just depends on the type of business and product and service offering that you have. We then come to phase six, accomplish. Mm. This is where the customer achieves the goal that they had when they originally decided to do business with you. Now, I'll be honest, Antoine, this is one that most businesses completely miss the mark on. Why? Because they never really check in with the customer to figure out what their original goal was. So imagine you sell a shirt and you're selling it in a retail establishment. A customer comes in and buy this, buys the shirt. Did you ask them why they were buying the shirt? Right. There's probably a difference if they're buying the shirt for everyday wear versus they're buying the shirt to wear in their wedding versus they're buying the shirt to wear to a funeral mm -hmm. versus they're buying the shirt to wear for their first interview for a new job. 
So depending on the customer's goal, we want to record that so that we can know as the business whether or not they accomplish the goal. Because by the way, it is the very, very rare exception of a customer who's going to refer you new business or come back to you for more business if they didn't achieve the goal they had with the first time they did business with you. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure they accomplish that. Wow. If they yeah. accomplish their goal, if mm -hmm. they cross the finish line, then we go to phase seven, adopt. Mm -hmm. In the adopt stage, the customer raises their hand and takes responsibility for the relationship. They adopt you. They become loyal to you. They're not going to do business with anyone other than you or your brand. And then if that happens, we have the chance to reach the holy grail. Phase eight, advocate. Mm -hmm. This is where the customer becomes a raving fan referring their friends and clients and colleagues to you. This is where now, the iPhone like, users are, right? Exactly, exactly. This is where you, you have friends that are advocates for different products and services because they've had such a great experience. Mm -hmm. They want everyone to know about it and they want everyone to have the same experience that, that they did. Now, mm -hmm. here's what I know about businesses. Mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure of working with thousands and thousands of businesses all over the world. I have never met a business that said to me, nope, Joey, we don't, anymore, we don't want any more referrals. We're good. No more referrals for us. No yeah. more referrals. We've got plenty, right? <laughs> referrals are amazing. And this is where some people miss the first 100 days concept. They say, well, Joey, our business is structured that they're going to stay away around for 100 days no matter what because there's so much paperwork they have to do or the length of our projects. We're not going to be done in the first 100 days. Mm -hmm. But all the research shows is that first 100 days is most important to determining the lifetime value of the customer and whether or not they will refer. So if you want clients that refer, you want clients that stay with you for a long time, you have to get that first 100 days right. And if you get the first 100 days right, you have the potential to have a customer for life. Yeah, this is really awesome. And, you know, one of the things I know for a fact is, is that we have some clients, what we call legacy clients, that have been with us for a long, long time. And... um you know, what, what I'm hearing also is like, are we taking them for granted? And, and I think there is a, maybe there is some of this. We're trying to, um, we're trying to maintain a relationship with them. But I just know that once they're past a certain point, um, there is a certain security that we have with those clients because um, there is the loyalty thing. And I, and I can see, like, you just put it in a hundred. It's just after that, it just, it's either they become loyal, or they're going to question their loyalty and you never bond, you know, and I think what I'm hearing you is that fast tracking or assuring that loyalty, uh, um, thing that you can have with your customers where they're like, they're going to stay with you. Uh, and it would take an enormous amount of, uh, of work for you to screw it up and have them go away. Now, granted, you can always do that, but this is really great because I'm, sure. I'm hearing the, the precision, the surgeon precision, just making sure that those people feel are taken care of. And, and I did not know that the 100 days was that, um, that fragile. Yeah, I think, I think there are two things. Number one, your goal should be, for a lot of people, as you said at the beginning of this part of the conversation, you didn't even know there were multiple phases, right? So yeah, here's the right. thing. Sometimes just even being aware of the fact that there are different phases mm -hmm. allows us to step into our customer's shoes better and understand what they might be going through mentally and emotionally as they do business with us. Right. Number two, this is about delivering a consistent regular experience, right? okay? So that it's consistently high quality experience delivered on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That's what builds that confidence. That's what builds that loyalty. Because you can have a great first date and then the second date is horrible. And guess what? There may not be a third date, okay? Right. But right. if the first date is awesome and the second date is awesome, guess what? There's going to be a third date. Now, I use the dating analogy intentionally because we're all familiar with how this stuff works in our personal lives. Mm -hmm. Additionally, it brings up the point of when you talk about having customers for a long time and taking them for granted. I don't know about the listeners, but I've been married for a number of years now. And what I've found is that on one hand, there's a natural tendency to want to just kind of take your foot off the gas a little bit and coast a little because we've got a routine. We've built it up. Yeah. That's a recipe for failure. 
Yeah. You've got to continue to pour your effort into the relationship, into strengthening it, into finding out new things about the person you're in relationship with. And mm -hmm. the same holds true for our businesses. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely, uh, absolutely right. All right, cool. So this was number, uh, number two, the customer journey, the eight phases. Now I want to hear from you guys out there. If there is any of the phases that you actually have, uh, a, a system in place to address. Um, and so I, that's, please put it below. That would be really cool. Cause it's like, you know, it's, it's really about sharing, um, uh, sharing our success stories. All right. The number three, the third point that we want to make today is what most businesses fail at with customer retention. Yes. So my goal, and when Anton and I talked about doing this uh, recording for you all, uh, he was very adamant about this and so was I. We wanted to give you clear action steps that you can put into practice at the moment you're done listening to this webinar, right? At the mm -hmm. moment you're done watching this, things that you can do. And so I want to talk about the three phases that cause business is the most trouble. Mm -hmm. Number one is the affirm phase, that buyer's remorse phase that I talked about. Mm -hmm. The secret in the buyer's remorse phase is that you need to affirm the decision your customer just made. Mm -hmm. Now, in most businesses, there is no communication from the business to the customer during this period. It's the period between when they sign the contract and when you have the kickoff meeting. And the only communication is maybe sending an invoice or you know, a scheduling email or something like that in a service setting, in a product setting. Mm -hmm. This is from the time they place the order. It's all the time they're waiting for their delivery to arrive when they can actually use the product that you sent them. Right. What I recommend you do in this phase mm -hmm. is to thank the customer for their business. It sounds old fashioned. It sounds trite. But the reality is most businesses don't thank their customers for the business in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. How would I do it in a meaningful way? I would consider one of two options. Option number one, the traditional old fashioned thank you note. Mm -hmm. Pull out a card and hand write a thank you. Not sending an email. Mm -hmm. Hand write a thank you to that person, telling them how excited you are about their project, mm -hmm. what you know their goals are, and what we're going to be able to accomplish, mm -hmm. and thanking them for their business. The yeah, other it, option, it's it's an uh, a, 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 an automated thank you email does not count if it does not involve a pen. That's not what you're talking about, right? Exactly, exactly. Right. I want it to go into their mailbox, the original inbox. Yeah. The reason is because that's not crowded. If I were to ask everybody listening in today to say, how many of you wish you got more emails? Raise your hand. Mm. No hands would be raised, right? Yeah, exactly. No one wants to raise their hand for that. But if I were to say to you, do you remember the last thank you note you got? Statistically, you do but it was a long time ago mm -hmm. right? and it was so meaningful and it stood out that you still remember it because it is not a common occurrence. So you can either hand write the thank you note. Another cool way to do it, which maybe speaks more to your digital audience because I know that's your crowd, Antoine, is yeah. to shoot a video, a thank you video, wow. personalized, not a mm. standard video, mm -hmm. right? a personalized selfie video. It doesn't have to be long, 30 right. seconds, minute and a half, you know, something short and sweet that you text to your customer or email to your customer, a video of you which is genuinely thanking them for their business and letting them know how you excited you are to work together. So that's what we can do in the affirm stage. Mm. Another area where businesses fail is in the activate stage, right? We want to energize this meeting and make mm. it a real kickoff. So whether this is the unboxing experience, if you sell a product or the kickoff meeting, make it something special. Do your research ahead of time to figure out the type of drinks and food and things that they like and have those available at your office when they come to meet with you or take them with you when you go to meet at their office. Mm. If they're coming to your office, have a secured parking spot for them. Have a sign in the lobby that welcomes them. Have everybody in the business ready to come by and greet them and to thank them for coming by. Mm. This sends a clear message that you're really excited about this business. So you really want to activate the relationship well. Yeah. The last phase that most businesses fail in is mm. the accomplish phase. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, the reason they fail in the accomplish phase is because they don't take the time to figure out what the customer is trying to accomplish. They have a preconceived notion. For example, let's say you build websites. Mm -hmm. Your preconceived notion might be that their goal is to have a website. Yeah, no. Maybe, 
but I doubt it. I yeah. bet their goal is to get new business or their right. goal is to get their boss to quit complaining about their existing website yeah. or their goal is to have somewhere where their employees can do blogging or their goal is to be able to qualify for an award that requires them to have a website. These are mm -hmm. all reasons that actual customers of mine back in the day when I was building websites mm -hmm. told me for why they wanted their website to be built. Not that they wanted a website for e-commerce or not that they wanted it for lease. There were all sorts of reasons. So you have to take the time to ask your customers what they really want and then track the progress towards that so that when you achieve that goal in the accomplished phase, you can celebrate it with them. Very, very cool. Well, this is, um, this gives me, uh, you know, I, I actually had those cards, um, little yes thank you little, cards i love it little little cards printed but i had them done um i would say about six months to a year ago and i use them sporadically and i know i heard somewhere in the conference that send more handwritten cards so this is why i had those cards doing and i and i'll do it once in a while um but i didn't have i i what really the uh the, the thing that made a difference with what you just said is that that handwritten card thanking the client to come on and reiterating what they wanted to accomplish and just telling them that our goal is to actually achieve your goals. It's just really, it gives me a, it gives me a very clear direction. To, this is really cool. Um, I just, you know, I, 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 this was more like sporadic, you know, the, yeah, yeah. On, on the moment, but now I have a clear, sure. uh, think it. I well, think now we have a system, right? And the right. way to make it consistent, mm -hmm. here's it. You want to change your life. Here's a little pro tip that will change your life more than anything I've said the entire conversation. Mm -hmm. Write one thank you note a day. Every day at work, write one thank you. Whether that's to a new customer for signing on with you, whether to, it's an existing customer for being with you for a long time, whether it's to one of your employees or project partners, thanking them for the great work they do, whether it's a vendor who provides for you, an attitude of gratitude goes a long way towards improving your business life and your personal life. That's and let me tell good. you, anybody that commits to this and writes a thank you every day of the work week, right? Five days out of the week from now to the end of the year, reach back out to me and let me know the impact. I bet your business has grown dramatically. You're happier. Your relationships both yeah, at work and at home are better mm -hmm. all because you took the time to say thank you. Okay, good. I'm taking it on. I'm taking awesome. it on. And I love I'm, it. I love it. And I'm I want to know from you guys who uh, listening to this webcast is are going to take it on or what else are you going to take on? Because there was the three businesses, which is the affirm, the activate and the accomplish. Which one are you going to take on to make a difference in your customer retention? And uh, I love the video, by the way. I think it's brilliant. Oh, and anyone can do a video. You can do it with your phone just like you that. You should do it with your phone. All the yes. research shows that a video done on your phone, like right. handheld amateurish, converts better than a video done in a studio. So release right. all those needs of, oh, we need to have a script and the proper no. lighting in the studio. No, 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 no. You pull out your phone, mm -hmm. shoot a selfie video, text it to your customer, it'll change your relationship. Yeah, for sure. So thank you so much, Joey. This was really, really cool. So the three things, how much is it costing you, your customer retention? How much is it costing you um, not to have a system in place? We talked about the customer journey, the eight phases of a customer journey. This was great. And what most business fell at with customer retention. This was really, really cool. Thank you so much, Joey. Oh, I can't wait to get your book in my hand and uh, start reading it and on that note I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and um, and I, I look forward to seeing you on stage somewhere around the world oh thanks buddy it's my pleasure definitely check out the book it's available in hardback and ebook and audiobook if you enjoyed listening to me you can enjoy listening to me read the book to you uh, it's available everywhere books are sold right now it's called never lose a customer again and my name's Joey Coleman. It's been a pleasure being on the show, Anton. Thanks so much. Thank you. So we're going to put the link, by the way, below in, uh, in YouTube. You're going to have the link to the book for uh, on Amazon. On Facebook, we're going to put the link anywhere we can put it. But if you go to the YouTube uh, video, you'll have the link right there. And uh, I'm sure it'll be posted on Joey's website, which is joeycoleman.com. And exactly. on that note, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Antoine.